Not that I know from personal experience, but I've heard the stories, and I hope you never find out what it feels like to have rockets launched at your city and bullets flying in the street and attackers right outside your door. But there's a lot of people in Israel that went through these events, and I want to tell you some stories. I've talked to many survivors of the October 7th attacks, and there's so many stories that I can share about people fighting off the terrorists, putting out fires, getting shot, and still running for seven blocks to save their daughter. A young lady that receives text messages from her sister that's in a kibbutz on the Gaza border with terrorists outside, and she's desperately asking for help, and the only thing that the sister can do being far away is call the police. But of course, all the lines are busy because hundreds of people are calling the police to get help. And also the city that she is in, the police department has just been destroyed and blown up by the terrorists. The only thing she can do is pray, and she's there on her knees, praying for the safety of her sister. And she pulls out her Bible, and she opens it up to read the Psalms. And all of a sudden, as she's reading it, there's a butterfly that comes in and perches. The butterfly is perched. A butterfly lands on the pages of her Bible. She had received all these frantic messages from her sister about the terrorists being outside. And all of a sudden she goes quiet, there's nothing, she won't answer messages. But because this young lady is praying and she opens her eyes, she sees the butterfly on her Bible. She takes this as a good sign and she, can, and she has peace that everything will be fine. It turns out the sister stopped texting suddenly because there's terrorists inside her house. They kind of camped out in her living room, maybe waiting for instructions or hiding from the defenders of the kibbutz, but they never even opened the shelter door to see if there's anybody inside. There's also a bunch of stories about babies surviving. Because the terrorists knew that people would hide in their bomb shelters, they would set the, the houses on fire, so people would suffocate inside. Young family, they have a newborn, like a week old baby, and because they can't breathe inside this uh, bomb shelter, all the smoke is coming in. There's a window in the shelter, and it has this thick metal sliding cover, uh, to protect from, from shrapnel, but they open that up and, they, and there's this ledge and they put the baby there so the baby can breathe. Even though she's exposed to the bullets flying outside and the terrorists, the baby survives. I interviewed a young couple with a baby that turned one month old on October 7th. They wake up to, those, to these rocket barrages, they run into the shelter, the baby sleeps in the shelter, they close up the, the doors and the windows, and as the, the husband, the, the father of the baby, goes to close the big uh, metal shutter on the, on the window, he hears automatic weapons outside. And because he has military training, he understands that they got to get out of there. And they, he says, I'm going to bring the car around, grab the baby. When I honk, run out there, we're, get, we're going for it. As they're driving away, they get notifications on their phone from their baby monitor app, and they can see images of attackers in their house. They barely escaped them by some 10 minutes. These are all unbelievable stories of survival, and what's interesting is they all have something in common. All these people that went through this, uh, or their family members went through this, they all say the same thing. They talk about how they're not heroes, they were just reacting, they just had a gut feeling and just went for it. It's amazing to talk to these people because I don't know what it feels like to go through that. It must be surreal. It's surreal having to listen to these stories and, and, and these people tell you what they went through. I find it very encouraging myself and that's why I share these stories with you. These are real people that went through some unbelievable experiences. Some of them didn't make it out, but whatever they did is because they wanted to save people that are close to them. Sometimes it's family and sometimes it's neighbors and friends. I think there's a lot to take away from that. Think about it. And come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another story.